Hello there, flesh and blood folks, and welcome to the Dice Commander YouTube channel and Go Again, the fabulous video cast about all things flesh and blood. I'm Andrew with here as always, and I'm joined today by Joshua the Intern and Michael Ramsey, who recently took down not one, but two of the ProQuests in the Houston, Texas, USA area with his Lightning Lexi deck. Today we're going to review his deck list, pick up some play tips, and we're talking Lexi into the new Uprising meta. A huge shout out to our channel members for supporting what we do here. If you want to get involved with the channel and the Dice Commando community, please consider joining as a channel member. Remember, these videos are only possible with your support. You can show that support with a like, a subscribe, and by leaving us a comment and sharing your feedback. Community first, and go Commando. Welcome back, Flesh and Blood folks, and thanks for tuning in today. So, how are we doing, Michael? Uh, I'm doing pretty great. Thank you for inviting me. I'm really looking forward to talking about Lexi. No, this is, this is going to be fun, and we were doing some pre-chats, and uh, some of the questions we had, you're already wanting to talk about. So this is, uh, this is very exciting. So before we get started, I do want to give a shout-out to our sponsor here, FabDB. You guys know them. You guys love them. They're the best resource on the interwebs for everything flesh and blood, from deck building to collection management. I know everybody's going to be 3 crafting with all the uprising stuff. So when you're over there, consider upgrading your account to unlock all those additional spiffy features. And thanks to our friends at FabDB for keeping the wheels on the bus here, as well as everything they do for the community. So, Michael, um, we're just going to kind of rapid-fire questions through you, but I think uh, the best place to start here, I'll throw up your deck list, because that's that's what the kids want to see, right? So I'll throw up your deck so. list and uh, just walk us, walk us through this, baby. Right, so as you have already mentioned, it is a lightning list, uh, one that focuses on a little bit less of a fuse, but that already might be a little bit surprising since you know if you've been keeping up with lexi and the meta around her a lot of people have been gravitating towards ice um especially since you know yuki lee bender uh, amazing player she recently came out with a list and did very well at the uh, pro tour uh, focusing on this kind of go wide slightly less fuse ice list uh, but i've been playing lexi you know since tales of aria came out since the release since the pre-release really um and i've done all kinds of different types of builds and testing, uh, you know, with Death Dealer and Voltaire, Ice and Lightning. And this is kind of what I've come to as what feels the best personally for me. And a lot of that does come from uh, just personal player experience and preferences. But it allows you to do a lot of things that are a little more unique from Ice. You know, it is offering less disruption. I can't really deny that but it is offering a lot more damage. Um, not even just immediately, because we aren't running a lot of cards like the Red Electrifies and Red Frazzles, which allow damage effects to stack up. But with Ranger and Voltaire, and especially Lexi's ability, when she flips up a Lightning Guard, adds kind of incremental value to your turn. So these arrows that are coming in for like four turn into arrows that are coming in for five or the arrows that are coming in for five come in for six, which doesn't seem like a lot. But when you're getting, you know, two to five extra damage a turn, it adds up quick. Um, and so you might see some of that. It, we've run in the main board a lot of zero cost arrows, mm -hmm. and the main board is mostly comprised of these one cost arrows. All these fatigue shots, sleep darts from Morsus's headshots, these are all kind of my silver bullets that I bring into different matchups. Um, just because she, Lexi and her arrows can be so specifically tailored to be good against certain heroes. And she can really kind of build a toolkit. Uh, and one that I feel that Ice isn't quite as good as building because they're much more constricted. You know, they have to run a certain number of fuse cards. They need to run Ice arrows too. And this offers you a lot more freedom. So... If if you don't mind, I'll just run through some of the this all stars. Of yeah, the well, list. Let, let me just run down the list for people real quick, and you can stop me as we go um, if you have any comments. So we have uh, yeah, one good. one battering bolt. Uh, this is all red, of course. We have one battering bolt. We have three Bolton shots. That's pretty pretty staple there. 
uh, three C and C's. Was was that a sideboard card? Yes, absolutely. Okay. For for just Prism or what other matchups? Uh, primarily for Prism, but it comes into some other matchups. You know, the Lexi Mare match. Um, I also put in two against Briar. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we'll have to talk. put a pin in that. We'll come back to that one. Uh, so we, we do have the Dazzlings. He is running Dazzlings in here with Zero Drop Arrows. We do have one Electrify, just one Electrify Red. Three Endless, of course. He has three Entwine Lightnings, right? Remember, that's the one that if you... It gets gets go again if you if you do the thing, right? We have Fatigue Shot. We have Headshot, which is only two of those, though. But then remember, that one comes in if it gets played face up. Comes in for a whole buttload of damage. We have three Presses, no surprise there. Three Surge. We have one pulse, three remorseless. Uh, was remorseless a sideboard for you? Yeah, uh, a lot of these one cost arrows are sideboard. Uh, that mostly came in almost entirely for chain. Mm -hmm. uh, it has some uses versus Briar and Viserai, but uh, as you get to it, you'll see that this deck actually has quite a lot of hate for chain. <laughs> well, yeah, fair enough. All right, uh, and then searing shot. I love that arrow. We have three sleep dart reds. We have three snapshots. We have three of a kind, no duh there. And then we have one unmovable. That was for your Starvos, I assume? Exclusively for Starvo. Uh, going into yellow, we have Fatigue Shot. We have three Lighted Ups. We have three Rain Razors. I hear that card's no good. And then we have three Sleep Dart Yellows. And then into the blue package, we have the Dazzlings again. We have Electrify Blue, three of those. Fatigue Shot, three Heaven's Claws Blues. Gotta love that card. Defends for three. Lightning Surge, Sleep Dart again, and then Snapshot. For weapons, he's running the he's running Voltaire, of course. The Bracers, the Tunic, New Horizon, the Boots, the Null Rune Boots, and Perch Grappler. So that gives you Null Rune 2, correct? Am I doing the math right on that? Uh, all the way to Null Rune 3, actually, since the Bullseye Bracers come with it naturally. Bullseye Bracers. Oh, I sorry, Heart of Ice is there. Sorry about, is okay. Sorry about that. I forget that. I forgot to hit enter on that line. I will fix that. Uh, all right. So a uh, quick question I had for you before we go into the sideboards, which I'm very interested in is, you know, a lot of times when we see the snapshots that's run with death dealer. So why did you decide to run Voltaire over De or uh, not? Why? We all know why Voltaire is good, right? But where did you end up? I, I'm sure you tried the death dealer. Where did you fall on that? Um, why, why this over that? Where do the snapshots fit in? So oh, I do believe Death Dealer is actually very strong by itself, but a lot of what this build is trying to do and why I like it so much is just have from consistency. It is so consistent. Um, it's amazing how many turns uh, are trying to do, you're trying to do the same thing turn after turn, really. Mm -hmm. You're trying to flip up a lightning card. You're trying to present an arrow that's just damage, so they're much more willing to take it. And then you come in with a one-cost arrow that has an on-hit effect. And so with consistency being the, the forefront of the idea behind the deck building, uh, Death Dealer gets a little worse because that build really does rely on seeing snapshots often. And you want to see all of them, and you're not guaranteed to. Um, and Voltaire, with the snapshots, it when it lines up, it lines up very well, especially on a three-of-a-kind turn if you can sometimes push through an extra arrow, but for the most part, Snapshot is actually just there for another zero-cost elemental. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. All right, any questions there, Joshua? I was just surprised to only see one Red Electrify, mainly because I feel like I, I've seen you play that card against me a lot more than just once per deck, but that could just be uh, me being traumatized by how good that combination <laughs> is in Lexi. Um, and then I do recall, because I was on Viscerai at the time, seeing a lot of your remorselesses come at really bad times for me. Um, so it's not just chain hate, but it seemed very, very good. It's good against a lot of decks that go wide, and I do love Electrify. Uh, I'm sad that I've cut it, and it's actually entirely just in the sideboard, the, the one red. The three blues are main boarded, but when you need to start making cuts, the, these red lightning cards that don't actually attack, uh, those can cause bricks. Um, you want to make sure that everything you have is either an arrow or still attacks. That's why 
I've running even blue lightning surges because it guarantees you almost always have an attack. That was one other question I was, or not question so much, but something that I, I don't know that one of the cards I was worried about when we were first discovering tails when things were getting spoiled was light them up. And I said, that card <laughs> can be so crazy good, especially with Guardian now that Guardian was going to be running five equipment uh, with their shield. And I still don't see people talk about how just really good that card is when it's your second or third arrow at that point. And you've already kind of decided whether you can or will block. And then you come at them with something that just has the potential to have plus four damage. It seems really good. That's a lot of what Lightning does, is it really punishes you for taking damage at the wrong times, because there is going to be something bigger happening at the end of the turn. Um, Light It Up kind of perfectly fits into that. I still don't think it's an absolute all-star of the deck, but it is extremely good, don't get me wrong. Um, it comes up quite a lot versus Starbo, who, like Josh mentioned, does have five equipment and will do five extra damage. So a lot of times that's an arrow coming in for... Uh, two resources, dealing a potential of 10 damage, which actually does matter. Uh, and versus a lot of characters, it will be doing, you know, an extra two to three. Um, especially since it's on hit effect, actually doesn't require the fuse. Um, I've sniped a lot of tunic turns um, because it just needs to deal damage equal to the number of equipment they have. So if they have two equipment, it only needs to do two damage to turn it off. And that's not actually the fuse. The fuse is to deal the additional damage. I see, I see. Okay, good. Um, another question I had for you is the uh, sleep dart. So you're running a full package of sleep darts. Um, so that's not purely sideboard then, right? Uh, the blues are main board. Okay. I don't like, this is, you know, 20 blues in the main board. I never change that out. I don't want to add any more. I don't want to add any less. Um, but the sleep darts, this is part of that chain hate I was talking about. It's very good against chain. It's exceptional versus Starbo. Uh, it is your main line of defense versus Starbo, since you don't have defense in other places, really. Um, but it also just does a lot. It's a very underrated arrow with just how much it can turn off a lot of characters' turns. Um, even if it's just shutting off just one or two rune chants from Visrite, for example, does a lot. Um, it can sometimes totally prick brick a briar. It can shut off Lexi's ability. It can make her brick on her arsenal because if she can't flip, she can't turn on New Horizons and can't open up that second arsenal. It has so much application against so many characters that honestly running all nine seems like a no brainer. Hmm. Okay. Okay. And then as so I, I think, I mean, I, I think, I think I got most of my questions answered on sideboard. And the main reason I'm on that is because uh, I've been playing around with this deck as well, and I just want to learn. So uh... It's a difficult deck to learn how to play. Um, Lexi in general, um, you know, I don't want to talk myself up too much and say, oh, I'm, I'm the master of the deck. But there are some lines that you can only really see after lots of practice with it. And um, if you still want to talk about the sideboard at all, I do run it a little strange. Um, I actually have a lot of cards in the sideboard. And then just depending on the matchup, I bring in nine cards. So the Entwined Lightnings, the Command and Conquerors, the Yellow Fatigue Shots, the Headshots, the Remorselesses, Red and Yellow Sleep Darts, the Electrify, and the Battering Bolt, along with the Heart of Ice and Alder Boots. Mm -hmm. I, those are all in the sideboard. And then I just bring in nine cards, depending on the matchup. Whatever nine cards will help you there. All right. So with your sideboard, you were saying that you always bring in nine. So it's, I mean, math is hard, right? So it's a 51 right. main deck with a whole bunch of side. So you're always choosing before each match what you're bringing. That's very interesting. Yeah. It's just the toolbox, right? Lexi is really good at building up this toolbox. What arrows do I bring in for this matchup? Uh, and you can decide that before the match starts. Sure. Oh, very, very, very. Do you ever cool. make? Do you ever make decisions based off of going first or second? I know sometimes that happens with certain, uh, certain builds and certain matchups. I just didn't know. What, does Lexi change on going first or second or no? Uh, not too much. No, I, I don't think I've ever made a decision depending on whether I'm going first or second. But I have made kind of on the fly choices 
just depending on if I know the person <laughs> or if, if I've played them before, then, you know, sometimes I might be more or less inclined to bring in Command and Conquer, for example. I know I mentioned I bring in two of those versus Briar, but honestly, I'm not that confident on it. And frankly, that number has switched in every single pro quest that I've played. Sometimes I bring in zero, sometimes I bring in one, sometimes I bring in two. Sometimes I just kind of do it by feel, which isn't the most scientific way to do it. But uh, it, it feels right. Yeah, sometimes I will say when we've played, I, I, when you play Command and Conquer, I feel a sense of relief because that means the turn is over and it's just damage. Uh, so it does seem like it's kind of your B option, you know, for... Exactly. It, it just depends because sometimes I feel that red sleep dart doesn't do that much against Briar, but sometimes it does a lot. And that's exactly what I'm trying to avoid. Uh, the The question on if this arrow does something or not. I want it to be a sure thing every single time. All right. Fair enough. Well, thanks for that. Do you have any... Uh, so again, that's two, two pro quests with... And it was exactly the same deck for both? I did actually make one small change. I changed... Originally, I had three blue fatigue shot and two blue sleep dart. And I ended up changing that for two blue fatigue and three red sleep. Yeah, pr pretty pretty significant change there. Well, but then again, the blues are the non-changers, so that's yeah, that's fair. All right, so did you have any uh, you know kind of like high level memorable moments from uh, any of your pro quests? Yeah, I mean, I remember quite a lot of the matches before we started this. I was looking through uh, my profile and you know how it lists all your previous matches and the people you went against and I'm going through and I'm reading all these names and like yeah I remember ex almost exactly how it went um something that surprised me through all these is that in each pro quest that I played this season I played three um I fought a Kano at every single one mm. um along with that the the player that I played in the finals of my the first pro quest that I won was my round one opponent at the second one. Uh, and it was another, you know, we play, he's a Houston local, we play together all the time. Um, and it's always very close. I feel confident in Prism, but that was across all my matches. That was by far the closest one. And of course, you know, you can't forget the finals. Um, my finals of the second one was against another local on Starvo. And it felt very fitting that this was the last pro quest of the season. It happened on the final weekend. And I was like, this is probably the final time I'm going to have to go against this this big dumb guy. And I was really relieved, to be <laughs> honest. Right. Well, now you brought up Prism. And I think that's a question that uh, both Joshua and I had. Um, so, you know, she's kind of, she's somebody that as a, I've been a Ranger player for a long time. And she's someone who always scares me. Uh, but you were yeah. saying that you think it's actually a pretty favorable matchup. Yeah. Um, if you've been used to Ice Lexi for a while, or Azalea for, for for the real ones out there, then Prism has probably been a huge pain in your butt. She just does everything right that's wrong for your deck. But... If you go lightning, you get the ability to go much wider. And that's what really matters against Prism. You need to present wide threats that don't turn on Arc Light Sentinel immediately. Um, and these cheap attacks that you can just throw at an aura at the end of a turn to just clear it and be done with it. Um, so in Twine Lightnings, I'm not sure if I mentioned those, but those are in the sideboard, all three of them. Mm -hmm. And they come in exclusively for Prism. Um, I see, I see, I see. Though and the entwined lightnings and the lightning surges do so much work because it's really important to be able to just like play it and fuse it. Uh, so it has that go again so that you're presenting damage so that you don't turn on Arc Light Sentinel because that is that's a killer in the matchup. Because anytime Lexi does anything, you open up an opportunity window for them to respond with it. If you activate Lexi's ability, that's a window for Arc Light Sentinel. You load an arrow with Voltaire, that's a window for Arc Light Sentinel. So you need to find ways to play around it. And the, the tools that are there that she has available are exclusive to Lightning Lists. Hmm. Very interesting. 
Do you have any questions on that, Joshua? No, that pretty much answered it because uh, at first blush, I would have thought that prison would be more challenging, but it, you answered it w with having something that you can do to start your turn off immediately without having to pause the reload your bow or um, flip over to activate Lexi's ability and just come straight in with the go in attack, uh, go again attack when you fuse it uh, makes a big difference. Yeah, uh, it's the same deal with Lightning Surge. If you've got it in Arsenal, you can just skip using Lexi to flip it and just play it immediately out of Arsenal to, to avoid those windows to give her. And uh, I, it's still very tricky. It's actually a very tricky matchup. Um, but that's kind of the case for everyone, isn't it? And like, yeah. And well, I always thought that Ranger hard. was kind of always going to be at a disadvantage because there's no getting around the fact that you have to spend a card to pop an aura. And it's yeah. the only class that has to do that. Yeah, it hurts having to, to use an all-star arrow, like Endless Arrow, to pop an aura. That, that's a terrible feeling. Uh, especially since in Voltaire builds, you know, Endless is such an all-star. But you can't have it all, I guess. Not versus Prism. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. All right, so are you... So Uprising's coming out soon. Right, I mean, we've already seen the set for the most part. Uh, is there anything you're excited about the new set for Lexi? Are you looking at playing her into the next meta? Are you going to try something different? What's your uh, what's your what's your plan? What's your gut feeling? Like you were talking about earlier. <laughs> My gut feeling is that it might be time to move on to ice. Um, there are some very interesting ice cards in there um, that, that were all shown off pretty early with just Icelander. Uh, I forget what it's called, but it's Snap something. It draws you a card from Arsenal and freezes a card. Hmm. Um, and then there's Hypothermia, to just, just stop go against. And then there's one of those cards that have been recently revealed that just creates Frostbites, which sounds very strong, because that means that the red, it'll create four Frostbites in total, because you can use Lexi to flip it to give them a Frostbite and then play it at the end of your turn to give them three more Frostbites. Mm. So that's going to be four, assuming you do nothing else, which sounds very strong to me. Um, that said, it, it solves a lot of the problems that I have with Ice right now, is that a lot of the times it's you're, you're not sure just how much it's going to affect them. Like, what's the value of a Frostbite? It could be four damage. It could be nothing. Um, you just never know with Ice. And I think... So these newer ice cards are solving that problem of how does a deck that relies on go again play the round hypothermia it just can't really um that said it's entirely possible that a, a lightning most like this stays strong because it actually does play through disruption pretty well um, because 20 blues and a lot of your things don't cost a whole lot so you can still have very strong turns, even if it's just like a lightning surge followed up by a searing shot. Uh, it will is only two resources and three total cards, assuming one of them is probably an arsenal. Um, so a lightning list that just kind of incorporates some of these ice cards in the sideboard could also be really strong, mm -hmm. right? Like in an aggro versus aggro match, if you're playing out this light it up and fuse it and then an endless arrow, and then you end your turn with a hypothermia, that sounds really painful to play through. So I think she's honestly looking really strong in this upcoming meta. Hmm. So, um, now, I mean, it's it's impossible to tell exactly where the meta will go with Uprising, right? But, uh, you know, one of the reasons I think we've seen a resurgence of Lexi near the end of this meta, this last meta, was that we were kind of not blocking anymore, right? By the most part, right? So your on-hit effects are really good. I mean, is that a fair assessment? I think for the most part is very fair. Um, I think something that separated Chain and Starvo was that they could afford to not block with cards from hand and still block extremely well with just their armor. Um, it's hard to get through Carrion Husk. It's hard to get through... I'm going to activate Crown of Seeds, pitching a blue. I'm going to use my shield to defend. And then I'm going to just use whatever armor I have laying around. Uh, both those things were really strong. Um, but they had the, the same idea of really just not wanting to block from hand. So, like I was talking about a little bit earlier, is that this deck is really tricky. And instead of starting the turn with an on-hit effect, like kind of Ice does, right? Because 
Ice likes to load a chilling ice vein, fire it, fuse, it has go again for Voltaire's effect, and then that'll last through the turn. So you kind of know immediately whether you want to try and block out this turn or not. Um, this lightning list is different in that it starts off with just damaging effects. You know, a searing shot for five go again isn't that threatening if you're chained with an Ardwar in hand. Um, but then if a sleep dart comes in immediately after that, then it's much harder to, to deal with. Because then you have to start giving up cards, but you've already taken the damage. Um, and so versus these decks that don't want to block, oh, she's been so strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense to me. So um, how does she deal with the new... Because the new Illusionist is kind of the same thing, right? You're going to have to be able to pop Ash Wings. You're going to have to be able to pop Dragons. Where do you... How do you see that working out? She's a weird one. She, I, I mean, I don't even know what to make of her right now. I think she's probably going to take a little bit of effort to figure out. As someone who's got a more of an illusionist mind than me, for sure. Um, but theoretically, if they're just trying to get dragons out, I don't think it'll be that bad to deal with. Uh, because they can't defend, you can actually just fire off a Bolton shot at them. Mm -hmm. And well, that's a good Bolton point. shot's effect will actually be on. It's the same deal with Endless Arrow. So, you know, if you're doing what the deck is trying to do and flip up a lightning card, let's just say Blue Electrify, um, and then load an Endless Arrow at plus one to give it a go again, that kills most of the dragons just right off the bat, and then Endless Arrow will come back to your hand. That's a so, good point. That's a good point. And then Blue blue Bolton Shot might actually be pretty good there, right? Yeah, Bolton Shot, I think most Lexis have figured out, is a pretty all-star card by itself. Right. Um, I'm looking myself as to how to get more of them in there because it's just such a good arrow and especially if dromai becomes a bigger threat then you can just load your deck with bolton shots and endless arrows and just get their on hit effects guaranteed on the dragons mm -hmm. yeah that's that's a really that's really yeah that's that's really cool good 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 all right. Well, I think that pretty. I, this was awesome. Great chat. I it's funny because I've been I've been trying to teach myself how. To, I finally got my new horizon, so I've been trying to teach myself how to play Lexi and not screw up and jam my arsenal up, which definitely happened in a tournament. Happens a lot. Yeah, it's very easy to let it happen if you're not being careful. Yep. So poo poo on me, but uh, this was great. I really appreciated this. Um, do you have any shout outs to give or anything you want to talk about before we get out of here? Uh, I mean, yeah, I'll shout out. You know, my my brother. Robert Ramsey and my main training partner, uh, along with Jonathan Strong, you know, we all got into the game together. I've all practiced together. Um, and we all got here together. And really just everybody in Houston, I'd give them all a shout out if I could, but there's too many of them to name. But to, to all the strong players and Joshua. Oh. <laughs> I kid, I kid. But really, to all of them, I thank them so much. It's it's such a nice community, um, and I really couldn't have asked a better place to enter. Oh, well, awesome. Well, thanks a lot for coming by. Hopefully you uh, had a good time. I know I did. And Joshua, did you have anything uh, to throw at him before we get out of here? I did bring up one question, because you mentioned Robert, and I've played a lot of games against both of you, and you're both obviously very good. Uh, it does make me curious, when, when you're playtesting uh, with Robert, Obviously, Robert was on Viscerai for most of the ProQuest, I think, yeah. this year, and you, you went with Lexi. So was there anything in your playtesting that led to that decision as far as, you know, I think Lexi has a shot? Because I don't think a lot of people from the outside would have expected to have seen Lexi and seen it do so well. Um, I was also kind of downplaying Lexi a lot, to be honest. Um, back in the last season, I played uh, my goal last season at these pro quests was to just get a top eight. I would have been very happy with a top eight, get a cold full of hero, feel good about myself. And so to the first one, also at Fat Ogre, uh, I think we reached 64 people on that one. Um, I actually brought Prism and I'd only practiced Prism for a little bit, but I managed to get top eight just because she's very strong and a lot of people have to have answers for you. You don't really need to have answers for them. Um, and so I made that top eight, and I said, okay, I'm satisfied with that. I'm just going to take Lexi, since she's my favorite character. She's the one I've practiced the most. Um, and I feel like my deck is pretty good. But I don't think even I realized the the power of my own list. 
um, at first. And it was when I started to play these ProQuests. I've entered four ProQuests with Lexi, and I've top aided four of them, um, all of them. And as I'm playing it at these higher level events against all these different people, I'm like, wow, this deck actually does a lot, um, which you don't always get if you're just you know practicing against uh, Starvo, which Jonathan was on, and against Viscera, which Robert was on. Um, but it has answers for for so much. It's got such a strong toolbox that you can make for yourself. Nice. Very cool. All right. Well, one last time, I want to give a shout out to Joshua for making this interview happen. And then thank you for using your valuable Friday after or Friday evening time, late night time, whatever it is to uh, sit here and talk with us. So really appreciate it. We'll have you back on in the future if that's something you're looking forward to. And uh, you guys got to say it with me. Go Commando. Go Commando. Go, go Commando. <laughs> I'll say the uh, the we didn't mention the prizes that he got, but the gold foil he got uh, for the last PQ was actually Domblade. Oh, yeah, I saw that, that I, was yours. I opened, mm -hmm. He shared I the photo on our Discord. That's awesome. Yeah. I opened that Domblade and said, "Okay, I have to play Dorinthia." Because <laughs> right. I was going to be doing some testing with the with the new one, the Quicksilver and Blitz, and then I was like, "Wait, she can't use this." Nope. So I have to. I have to <laughs> Keep going on with the same old classic Dory. Yeah. What was the other? What was the other one you got? It was a uh, Null Rune robe. Null Rune robe. It's cold, cold or gold, gold foil. Sorry. Yeah. Gold. yeah.